Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. Welcome back to week 5 of the Hogs of War League here between Caster and Bobby. We are starting on Death Bowl, which we have not seen yet. So it's going to be interesting to see how both of these players react to this map. Uh, to fill you in on Caster's team, he's going for four paratroopers and one gunner. And I mean, you just saw Bobby's lineup there. So I believe it will be Caster to go first. Of course, playing as Team Lard and Bobby as the Uncle Ham's Hogs. Caster is still unbeaten in the league so far, but he does have the advantage here going first in this first matchup on Death Bowl. So plenty of madness gases. And, well, for Caster, plenty of jetpacks. And he's looking to slide down. Ooh, almost overshooting it. But immediately is going to go for the 100 health crate. At least I believe it's 100. Or is it 50? I can't remember. It's been a long time. It is 100. It's been a long time since I have played on Death Bowl, let alone played Death Bowl competitively. But will Caster have enough time here to get his shot away? I don't think so. But he has taken up all of his time <laughs> getting that health crate. And he is down, or up, I should say, to 230 health. Wait, we're playing deathmatch. How are we playing deathmatch? <laughs> you picked the wrong death. thing. You, <laughs> you picked deathmatch. Uh, death well, at least you, at least we realise now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> well, that's going in the video. <laughs> So we start again here, this time not playing on Deathmatch. We don't want that game mode because, well, if you kill a pig, he will instantly respawn. So it was kind of lucky that uh, both players noticed in the end. Bobby having a little bit of internet issues, but hopefully that is sorted. And Caster is going to do exactly the same thing he did last time. But maybe this time he can look to uh, take his turn as well. But I don't think he'll have enough time anyway. And that might be a little bit too short. No, I think he, he should be just about safe. But he is right on the edge. But he does pick up... Ooh! Does pick up the Madness Gas and almost... Almost getting his turn away there with the Madness Gas. But running out of time. Good use of his muscle memory there. But uh, Bobby's going to go for a standard Madness Gas shot to the face. Which will send the Paratrooper, after collecting the crate, down the hill into the mines. And he's going to want to get him into the poison water as soon as possible in order for Caster to run out of methods of healing. Because, well, as you can see here, he's using the strategy of taking the health crates as soon as possible. But in doing so, he is using up a lot of his time. So both players are not necessarily mirroring each other because Bobby so far hasn't gone for any of the health crates. But Caster should have enough time here to at least throw a Madness Gas or do something during his turn. So taking a little bit too long there. Thinking about it just a bit too much. Looking to get the double but falls into the mines. But the scout will fall down and there's only two health crates remaining. Oh, that's going to be a ton of damage there. As the scout will also take fall damage. And is down to 77 health and he can't really do much down here. Other than wait for the jetpack that will eventually fall. But instead he's going to play it simple. Go for the damage. And Philip is down to 54 health. So on to Caster's single gunner. In a team of five. Like I said earlier, four paratroopers, one gunner. And hogging all of the madness gas. He's going for the heavy weapon shot here, going for the easy target of the scout who's in the middle of the map, as you saw. And that will nudge him into the poison water. But will he live just enough? But I doubt he'll have that much health left. Down to 33, so he could potentially grab the jetpack that just came down, get the health and then carry on, but if he does grab the health, he will be at a disadvantage given that he'll be positioned in the minefield. But Bobby, very accurate with his mortar shots before, and this one should be good as well. Ooh, maybe just a little bit too much. I thought that was going to drop at the last second, but overshoots it. 25 damage though, so he does get something on Caster's pigs, and he's going to look to jetpack 
with the damage. Try and get the knockback. Can he knock him off the cliff? He can indeed, and down goes the paratrooper. But does he have enough to fall in the mines, though? Not quite. The caster might look to do even more damage. Now he's going to target the other paratrooper. Basically get Bobby off the high ground. But only 12 damage coming to his gunner. So Bobby does have two scouts, so he is playing the long-range game obviously more accurate with the sniper rifle. As he looks to, again, shoot Philip. He needs to go for the quick damage. Get him down to 14 health. So, solid shot there, but needs to stay hidden, I guess, on the minimap. But this is where Caster can pinch the other jetpack. Maybe go for the health crate. He's going to look, look to nudge his health down. Probably wanted to get him in the water, but... Depends here. He only has a little bit of health, so he's going to try and nudge it a little bit more. Eight damage there, so that should be an extra turn gained. And from here, Caster will look to... Well, escape, I suppose. <laughs> or nudge the paratrooper in. He knows that Philip is going to die at some point. So, why not go all out and just look at the pig there just being nudged around the minefield and eventually falling into the center but how much health 45 goodness gracious so the mines are really doing caster some luck there but bobby's gonna escape grab the health and he does still have some jetpacks to get a getaway to make a getaway i should say so back up to 145 health Ooh, but needs to be careful very close there with the jetpack Time ticking away here. He could potentially nudge him. Taking his time. Just enough. Doesn't even damage himself. And down goes the gunner. Is it enough? He does fall in. So he is basically stuck down there with the scout. The scout is pretty much dead. And it's back to the pig that took the first turn. 230 health on the high ground. And in a good position to knock down the paratrooper again. Again, Caster looking to utilize mobility in combination with damage. And that was enough to knock him down. And he too will go back down into the center part of the map. That does cost him some time, but he should get a shot away here with the bazooka. And that, yeah, that's another pig down. <laughs> Everyone falling into the bowl of death. But no damage coming from the mines there. And we have paratrooper upon paratrooper. Just chilling. But Bobby again looking to get the health crate. So both players picking up two health crates during this match. 400 health in total. And where does he go from here? Needs to keep an eye on the time. Doesn't have a lot to deal with. He might have enough time to maybe... Scoop with the melee. Two seconds left. Looks to swing around. Gets it. Gets the melee and down goes the paratrooper that has 200 or so health. <laughs> Gets the measly five damage. So 30 damage in total there. But Caster with the advantage in terms of health and high ground. And Bobby needs to get out of the ball as soon as possible. Caster changing position here. Just about gets it. If he'd have left that a second longer, he would not have had enough room to make the landing. But also picking up the Madness Gas. Almost skipping his turn as he looks to damage the gunner here. A little bit dangerous, but... And again, his pig also has plenty of health. And he's <laughs> the gunner circles around the minefield. The scout is down, but the crate is still there. And, well, he's going to get out of there as soon as possible. The gunner is going to make an escape, surely. Or at least try and damage him and maybe remain... Yeah, he's going to remain in the bowl. Look to get the poison. Not quite. Doesn't land in the water, but he might go... Yep, goes with the flamethrower. This could be a lot of damage here from this distance. Down to 41. He could die. He is definitely... A goner almost gaining caster an extra turn there. Beautiful play with the flamethrower. 10 damage coming in total 
for the gunner and the paratrooper there. But Bobby needs to look at the center. Look how close those pigs are together. But look how much health they have as well. So he needs to get an accurate shot here. Maybe get at least one of them into the poison water. And has his training come in handy? It looks a little bit short. No. Perfect. And all the damage coming, but still no poison. He does get the kill. And the extra damage as well, so that will do him some good. But I'm feeling like Caster is pretty comfortable in his current position. Both players do have four pigs. Don't forget Bobby has a scout. Two scouts, even. But the gunner is going to fly all the way down, and he should be a goner. He is indeed. So it's now 4v3. But again, full health scout. He needs to look to do something here. He doesn't have the heavy hitting weapons. He doesn't have the mobility. He just has the sniper rifle. And of course the poison. But when you have a paratrooper with 143 health, it's a lot of work and indeed a very long game to try and play the long game with the poison damage. But he also needs to think about Mr. Philip over here with 14 health. There are no more health crates, so Bobby should look to clean up, but I feel like Castor is going to not really care too much about this pig. Might use him as extra damage. Because, again, he knows he's going to die anyway, so why not? So some slight technical difficulties there, but no worries. We're back here with Caster. That shot a little bit short. Quite surprising. Might be perhaps a little bit of input lag. It is a stormy night here at the moment where I am indeed hosting. So there might be a little bit of delay, but Bobby should have enough there to take down Philip, as I said. And just to add insult to injury, he falls into the mine. So it's 3v3. Caster needs to be careful here. Picks up the madness gas. Backtracking a lot. Doesn't have a jetpack, so he's going to look to pick that up as well. And gain access back to the high ground. Now the interesting thing here is that if Caster runs out of jetpacks, he then has to be looking for those scouts. So the benefit of having Scouts in general is that they are disguised on the minimap. And I forgot, sorry, it is 3v2, not 3v3. So yeah, the one scout can't be seen on the minimap. So Castor will have to search for him, move for him, and as you can see, most of his paratroopers with a lack of jetpacks. Again, heavy shot there. Should be enough to nudge him into the mines, just about. So 25 and 19, but he is safe. Does he have any more jetpacks? He does. He still has one more. So Bobby still has a chance here. But a lot of the mines have been detonated already. Whoa. Goes all the way up there to try and deal damage. Just a little bit. Seven in total. And again, he's probably going to go for the scoop. Good old cattle prod. Needs to aim for the center of the mines just enough. Will it be enough to detonate, though? Are there any left? There is, and he gets the kill. So, 2v2. But we have Phil over here on 130 health. He has full health. And then Caster's other paratrooper still has 230 health. So, all to play for here for both sides. And I don't know if you can hear that through my microphone, but... There are some fireworks going off, so I apologize if there's background noise. <laughs> Not expected at this time, but Caster looking to deal the damage with his bazooka from long range, aiming it down. Doesn't need to complicate it, but only 29, and he falls into the mines again, and that is unlucky for Bobby because I thought that the paratrooper would have enough to stay up there, but to his rescue there is a jetpack. But it does land quite close to him. So Caster might be looking for some extra damage there. And will Bobby go for the poison here? He could look to nudge him down with the grenade launcher. 
That would have enough. But needs to be careful of the minefield. Ooh, bounces. Just too much on one side. And that is unfortunate as Ben sits with 230 health. And I think if Caster didn't have that extra 100 health crate from earlier, things would be very different right now. But this is where the, the range of the scout is limited. And if you don't have a sight line, it can be pretty tricky. Only six damage coming from the mines. But it's back to Bobby Jim. And there are two jetpacks down here, so they do have methods of escape. But a ton of damage is needed from Bobby. Oh, and he's going to look to slip back down again. That's not enough. Again, unfortunate from Bobby. And again, damaged by the mines. It's a tough one. Paratrooper down to 54 health. <laughs> and Caster with the high ground is going to look to push them into the poison water through the madness gas as they'll run around like crazy. Gets one, gets the scout at least. But I don't think he's at the right angle to go for a swim. He is, he jumps in and he is poisoned. So down to 62 health now. And it's all in favor of Caster at the moment. Sitting comfortable on the high ground, Bobby needs to take his time. He was a little bit too far away there, but I think that's what he meant to do last time, landing in the same spot, near enough. But where does he go from here? Getting some distance away from the paratrooper. And this time going with the grenade launcher. So looking to uh, angle it behind him, but doesn't quite get enough. And, well, the lack of knockback there. Only 26 damage. He is down to 204 health. But it's not looking good for Bobby so far. So Caster, seeing as he has the health advantage, he's probably going to take it easy here. Not go for anything too complicated. He knows he doesn't have to put himself out there and can just play around <laughs> with the madness gas here. I don't think that has enough to make him run off the map because he'll just spin back around again. Ooh, almost. Could have ran into the mines, but runs out of time. And it's back to Bobby, who has one last attempt at getting out of Death Bowl. So all the way up. And he'll be looking to scoop him back down. So at least he'll have both of his pigs on the high ground. But again, the decision as to how and in what direction you scoop is important. So oh, plenty of damage coming there. Will he land in the water? No, but the fall damage comes and he's down to 61. So, Bobby's still in the fight. Caster needs to get this on target. And that's going to land short as well. So, a little bit of nerves playing here. But again, <laughs> there's a, a big difference in health at the moment. Interestingly, Bobby going for the other paratrooper rather than the one closest to him who has the most health. Gets the hit as he's down to... 21. But this should be an easy kill here for Caster as long as he keeps his cool. Keeps his distance as well, so he relies on the machine gun. As so he falls down, and that does not result in a kill. But do bear in mind he is poisoned, so he will only have one more turn remaining. And Bobby needs to get a kill here to prevent Phil from coming back out of the Death Bowl. But keep an eye on his position. The paratrooper is on the edge. He's on the edge of the bowl. Which I'm sure Caster will be looking at with anxious eyes. Because if you're positioned close to the edge, as you can see, Caster is positioned further inland. He does not want to be near the edge at all. And he's going to try and take advantage of it with a 35 damage hit. Doesn't fall down, though, but he is down to 19 health. 
And Bobby has one more turn. As he looks to poison him, which is a good move. But I feel like Caster has, a, well, he has a huge advantage. And bearing in mind that it is not the uh, paratrooper on Bobby's team's turn yet, Caster can just ignore the scout, go for the paratrooper, and potentially get the win here. So he will do exactly that, just needs to angle it down. Goes for near enough full power, and that will be round one to Caster as he gets a full <laughs> oh, and full damage again, adding insult to injury. The scout falls, and as I said, Death Bowl goes to Caster. So round one, Caster is one up. We're going to move along to Hedge Maze for round two. So welcome back, round two onto Hedge Maze and Caster changing things up to a scout going first, then a medic, grenadier, heavy weapons, and a sapper. We haven't seen many sappers recently, not since last week. So far week five has been void of most sappers. Bobby's going to go for a medic to start with it seems. Changing it to a paratrooper instead. Heavy weapons. Another heavy weapons. Another heavy weapons. And a paratrooper. <laughs> so three heavy weapons. Two paratroopers. Interestingly, no healing for Bobby. So going all out offensive with the heavy weapons. The mortar, the bazooka, flamethrowers, jetpacks. All kinds of things. And it will be Bobby to go first. That is as soon as... <laughs> as soon as we change it. So that he does go first. So it will be Bobby to go first. So he needs to be looking at those health crates. Those juicy health crates. He needs to steal them as soon as possible. Because that is the automatic advantage that you have. But he's instead going to take his own and just quickly get a shot away with the bazooka. Look at this shot here. Almost almost going full on with 31 damage to begin. And it will be Caster's scout to start things off. Interesting move, but he'll pick up the health crate. And I'm guessing look to poison someone as soon as possible. Because it's the start of the round and Bobby, well, doesn't have an orderly. But for those that don't know, the teams are chosen before the game begins. Or at least before you play your match against somebody competitively. That way you can't go ahead and uh, see the other person's lineup and then choose it based off of that. It's all done completely blind, but there was a good shot back there by Caster with the poison gas. So the thing Bobby needs to look to do here is, well, he's doing exactly that. Overshooting, though, with the mortar. He's looking to deal quick damage as fast as possible. He doesn't want to play the long game. He wants to get in there Whittle Caster's health down as soon as possible, but it is the orderly to pick up the other health crate. So he now has two pigs on 160 health. And just as we saw in the previous game, the health pool increased on Caster's team again. So in terms of health, he automatically has the advantage. But he kind of runs himself out of steam here, going in the center. I'm guessing he was looking to close the gap. But overshoots, but intended to overshoot as he destroys Bobby's health crate. So, very interesting tactic there from Caster. I was surprised, but uh, I was kind of swallowing at that point when it, <laughs> when it exploded, so forgive me there. It was quite surprising actually seeing Bobby not collect the health crate with his gunner. If you have a health crate near you, you need to collect it as soon as possible. Because like I said a minute ago, as soon as you're able to boost up your health, that, that's just what you need to do, you know? Especially when you don't have a team that has... Uh, especially if you're lacking an orderly, basically. So 
But now Cass is going on the offensive with the Cluster Bombs. But only gets 28 damage there, but the bombs slide back down. And he gets the pretty much the full amount of damage there. So it's back to the heavy weapons. So far, Bobby's shots haven't been too accurate, which has kind of let him down. He needs to be hitting these as his team is made up of heavy weapons. And again, only 23 damage. You can sense the nerves coming in, but it is back to Caster's heavy weapons, who is doing the same thing, keeping the distance, relying on the mortars, and, well, a little bit of a lazy shot there from Caster. Maybe rushed it a little bit too much. Just overshoots it. Not as good as his uh, health crate destruction shot. But Bobby will be looking to collect these crates as they are closest to him, or at least he should be able to. Going for the high explosive grenades, which are really more important. Much faster way of dealing quick damage, as I said earlier. And he goes for the most important player of the orderly. But it bounces off the tree. Again, costly mistakes from Bobby so far. He started off strongly with some decent shots with the heavy weapons, but just quite a few handful of turns here. Letting him down. But it happens, you know? Nerves happen. It doesn't matter how many times you play this game, you will never be 100% accurate every single time. And that is why we love this game so much. And that is why we have this competitive scene, because it is viable in itself. And Caster going for the standard TNT strategy. So it nudges health down to, well, 92. I was going to say at least 90, but the TNT wasn't positioned that close to the pig. And it's back to Bobby Jim, who was at 150 health, down to 61. And what does Bobby do from here? Primary targets should be the Medic and the Grenadier. But he's thinking... And going for the melee. <laughs> Interesting shot there, but can he get the explosion? He can! Oh my goodness me! The scout goes down. Caster pauses for a second there. And again, for those who might be joining us right now, we might not know about Hedge Maze. It is notorious for things like that. We talked about it before the last time we played Hedge Maze, but again, if you don't know, if pigs go out of bounds, there is a chance that they will explode because, well, this game is old. The coding, the programming is old. And crazy stuff like that can happen because apparently the pig didn't know how to get back onto the playable surface. So Caster... Losing the first pig, and it's basically advantage to Bobby, seeing as that scout had 160 health. And the scout could be damaged here as well. And Bobby doing a little wiggle. <laughs> Just getting rid of all kinds of nerves. Needs this to be on target. At least 40 damage, I think, he'll be looking for. But that does look good. Yeah, 41, and the extra 61 damage there. Destroying the bridge as well. So it's all... <laughs> everything to play for, basically. 5 versus 4, but that poison from earlier coming in handy. Caster with the full 60. So how will Bobby play it from here? He was going for the mortar, but he's going for the kill on the sapper just to remove all of Caster's pigs. But the, will the bridge save him? It does! The bridge gets in the way, blocks the damage. That would have been pretty much a full 40 damage there. So very, very unlucky for Bobby. That could have been 5v3. And again, that's going to cost him. Caster getting multiple bits of damage there onto both of the gunners. I think Bobby will look to finish off what he tried to do a second ago. 
Doesn't want to waste a mortar, so standard bazooka should be easy practice for him. Full damage. So now it is 5v3, but three very dangerous targets in a heavy weapons, an orderly, and a grenadier. So even though Caster's back is to the wall, he will not be giving up. <clears throat> He'll be wanting to get a clean sweep in this game, and of course, the tranquilizers are coming out to gain himself extra turns wherever possible. Just needs to target, and he does connect. So the gunner will drop down to 75 health, the paratrooper down to 35, and this is where Bobby needs to choose his targets wisely. Bearing in mind the Grenadier does have 120 health total, which isn't that much, as it is the class that has the lowest amount of health, but gets the full damage there with the high explosive grenade. Caster looking paratrooper, he's got... Bobby has two players that are tranquilized at the moment. So that could be two kills. Not going to get the maximum damage though. Down to 33. He's not going to want to kill him just yet because, again, that pig is poisoned. But don't forget about the gunner in the corner of the map. Using his last mortar shot. And Caster should get it fairly close here. As he's done it quite a few times now. From the same place. But only 20 damage. Nothing more. Nothing less. And I think some damage needs to come onto the Grenadier. All the heavy weapons here, but it looks like Bobby's still going for the orderly. Again, if you leave a Grenadier that long, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one later on in the game. But that will possibly be a kill. No! The extra splash not doing enough. And the orderly down to four health now. But both of the pigs in this area are, of course, poisoned. There's still one paratrooper over here that's just chilling. And he could get a kill here, but he's gonna instead go for the Trank. So, once again, gaining an extra turn. And I think Caster will look to get his health down at least. Or maybe go for the other paratrooper. I'm not entirely sure. Because he does have a long way to run. But he might be able to make it Ooh, costly there. That's going to cost him a few seconds. But again, still should be enough to close the gap. And I guess get the kill on the paratrooper who does have... He only has 35 health. So he's going to look to gain himself an extra turn. But too much damage. 44 in total. And the paratrooper falls. But it's still all to play for. The bar is still equal. It's anyone's game. Again, it needs to go for the Grenadier. He is just too dangerous in this situation. But again, if you think about it, the Grenadier and the Heavy Weapons both still have full health. I think Bobby needs a little bit more distance on that one. It's going to fall a little bit too short. And that Heavy Weapons is all out of mortars. Plenty of tactics being thrown around here. Caster again <laughs> looking to run up the wall. A little bit dangerous. But the gunner is going to change position for the first time in the match. And he could look to hit the heavy weapons to the left with a bazooka shot. But I think he's just going to go for the guys in the corner. So just on zero seconds there. Overshoots it though. 17 damage only. I'm not sure if Cast is suffering from any kind of input lag, but nevertheless, he will look to get the kill here, and of course, doesn't want to kill his own orderly. In the long run, it's a lot harder when you have pigs that have low health, like the orderly, because you have to take the time to take them down, but the paratrooper lives! 
as Caster overshoots the rifle burst. And again, decisions, decisions for Bobby. He's going to play it safe. His gunner does have 120 health. But he needs to think about the orderly as well. Doesn't want to overshoot it, doesn't want to overhit it. That could be a little bit short. That sh should be... Yeah, too short. Thought it might have enough, but... Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and well, Caster picking up another high explosive grenade. And that will be very costly for Bobby. Could be a kill here for Caster. In fact, most definitely with the gunner only on 30 health. And you can sense the scales are shifting in favor of Caster here. Bobby should be able to clean up the orderly. Goes for the simple pistol shot. So it does get rid of him, but even though it is 3v2 now, we have two pigs on the far side of the map with a lot of health. And two pigs in the center with full health. So it's a tricky one. Bobby saved by the bridge. Caster won't be able to make that jump. It's not going to bother him too much. Because he needs to go for some kind of kill here. Or at least maybe some splash damage. Gain himself an extra turn. Which he does 18 damage there. But Jim Bob will still have one more turn. And again, this is where Bobby needs to inflict some kind of damage here. He's going to go for a pickup weapon, I think. But whether, or not, whether or not he'll have enough time... Keeping that in mind, if he can pull some kind of heavy, thick damage out of nowhere, we will see. So the high explosive grenades will be handy from here. He's got some good distance. Needs to connect. Might be a little bit too far. No, he does get the full 60. So he's now down to 80 health. So again, even though it's 3v2, you know, Bobby has changed positions. Changed up his strategy. He has moved the pigs away from each other. Drawing Caster out of position. <laughs> but talk about overkill. Caster refusing to go for the rifle. And looks to kill the paratrooper. And I'm guessing collect his crates as soon as possible. So he can continue his spree with the high explosive grenades. So Bobby will be careful here. Needs to get an accurate shot. He has relied so much in this match on his own shots. And, well, <laughs> you can see them coming into practice there. So the gunner down to 40 health. But if you think about the matchup between a grenadier and a heavy weapons, and a grenadier who's going to pick up even more high explosive grenades, you can see what I'm getting at. It's going to be tough for Bobby. The only thing he has at the moment in terms of an advantage is distance and the time it takes for Caster to run over to him and, and basically be within range of his pig. But here comes the other heavy weapons. Will he have enough time? Goes for the machine gun shot. Doesn't even need to aim because he knows he has the correct angle. So the gunner down to 80 and Jim Bob will look to give his own life, I think. Not that he can, but he will try and damage the Grenadier here with a mortar. Can he finally get an accurate mortar shot? We haven't seen one since a little bit earlier on, and that will be 37 plus 17. So, a good amount of damage there. Shorty down to 66. But Caster's not going to bother with... The other gunner that's going to gain him an extra turn. And, well, you can see the advantage immediately. And I think, I think, Caster will have this one in the bag. So he's just toying with him here. Doesn't need to go too crazy. I thought he picked up the cluster bomb there. But instead, instead sorry, goes for the high explosive grenade again. And Bobby... Limited in terms of options. He's probably going to look to body block. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> instead looks to suicide instead. Deal some damage. And that is going to be a win for Caster. So Bobby goes out in the same way as Mascatino. Choosing to kill himself rather than be killed. And Caster can just skip his turn as round two on Hedge Maze goes to Caster. And he takes the win here in match 23. Two to nothing. So Caster is still unbeaten. Five wins, no losses. And Bobby now drops to one win and four losses. So a lot of changes coming on the table. But I hope you guys enjoyed. That has been Bobby versus Caster. Let me know what you think about this match in the comments. Get a discussion going like we always do. And I hope you can join us for the next match over this weekend.